will be like far away. They're afraid to get nose to nose and toes to toes with another man because they haven't, they can't deal with that uncomfortableness because they're weak men. And they don't know how to give that feedback. And when they do, they're looking looking down at the ground and talking under their breath. Like, no, look him in the eyes, speak clear and concise, and give him the feedback. They don't know how to give it to another man. They don't even want to give it. They're afraid to give it. Then when they do give it, it's weak, pathetic, and meaningless. That's not helping that individual climb out of that 10 spot. Like, if you're going to tell me I'm number 10, you better tell me why. And if it's something you have personal, then we can have words about that. But... Why am I number 10? Like, let me know so I can un myself if you just tell me some shit stuff because you're afraid of, of rocking the boat or whatever else, or whatever you want to call it. Nut the up and tell me why I'm number 10. Real. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast, and today we're going to do a deep dive into feedback, both giving and receiving, transmitting and receiving of feedback. It's not done often enough, not done in the right ways, and people avoid it and fear it in both directions. We're going to do a deep dive on this episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. This is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms, all while you create your own personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. And a one way to do that is to weaponize everything. And today we're talking about specifically weaponizing feedback. How do we weaponize feedback? And sometimes that means weaponizing your failures, weaponizing your wins, weaponizing your weaknesses. That happens through feedback. People don't know how to give feedback anymore. And let's start this off with realizing that in order to both either give or receive or first earn, first even earn the right to give other people feedback, you first have to be willing to receive it yourself. And in order to receive feedback the right way, which we're going to get to in a little bit, you have to first get your own shit together. You have to go first get your own house in order. Plato says the first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. So before you worry about giving someone else feedback, before you worry about getting feedback or even asking for feedback, you have to conquer yourself first. Be prepared to handle this feedback coming in. Be prepared to transmit the feedback going out. This is all about the ability to take feedback and and being accountable. It starts with a a self-conquest. First, conquering yourself. That's always what it starts with. It starts with you and your personal discipline, your personal development. In all these things we talk about, we talked about failure on a recent episode. You have to first conquer yourself before you could deal with failure. We talked about controlling your emotions. We talked about all these different things, about finding your purpose about dealing with suffering, all these things you first need to have that victory over yourself before you could deal with any of this other shit. So let's let's take this deep dive into, into, into feedback. Most people are afraid to give feedback because they're too busy walking on eggshells. They're afraid to hurt other people's feelings. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to say it right. They're afraid they're going to upset people and rock the boat. They don't want to rock the boat and all this other bullshit. And they act like little bitches and they let shit slide. And the the more you let shit slide, the more you're going to become resentful of that person, that situation, that job, that career, that business, that relationship, whatever it is, that spouse, that, that, that your kids. I know people who are resentful towards their kids. Like, how fucking stupid are you? Because they're too afraid to hurt people's feelings or do it the wrong way or whatever else. Like, motherfucker, give me feedback, please. I'm I'm begging for it. And it's multidimensional. Like... Again, in order to earn the right to give someone feedback, you have to be willing to receive it first. You need to be asking for it first. And you need to first conquer yourself. But listen, if if you if I had a booger in my nose, you better fucking tell me I have a booger in my nose and I'm about to go speak on a podcast. Like, 
a few episodes back, one of these eyebrows, probably right now, my cameraman, Tyson, behind the camera right now, didn't tell me that these eyebrows, and they're fucking out of control. These are like a caterp- caterpillar on crack. This thing was like curled all the way up in the air like a fucking devil's horn. And I didn't see it till we saw the recording, till we're ready to release the episode. I'm like, what the fuck is that? How did you not tell me that this eyebrow was all the way up in the air? Because I'm a hairy bastard. One time, we were at an event uh, promoting the project. And we had a booth. It was at a, a, a big event, High Performance Summit. This is three, almost four years ago, right after the first class of the project. And one of the other instructors, he's looking at me really close, up close and personal on my face. And he gets really up close to my, my nose like this. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I know I know, I got a big honker and all. And he starts fiddling around on top of my nose, picking around on the outside of my nose. And he pinches and he plucks a fucking hair off the outside of my nose. And this thing was like a, a good half inch, at least a quarter inch long. A hair. I'm a hairy bastard. Who grows hair on the outside of their fucking nose? But that means that I had a hair on the outside of my nose for how many ever months it took to slowly grow to the length that it was. It was like a little fucking worm that no one told me I had a fucking hair growing on the outside of my nose. Someone tell me. Tell tell someone that they got spinach in their teeth. They got a booger in their nose. They got a hair growing on the outside of their nose. And now my kids, Midge, is constantly, she's on patrol searching for the hairs on the outside of my nose. And she's done the plucking of that hair many, many times since then. But give feedback. Don't be afraid to give feedback. Don't be afraid to receive feedback. Don't be afraid to have those tough conversations. We're going to break all this down here today. And a lot of times I like to go back to stoicism and then, you know, we freakify that stoicism. We take it back to philosophy because that's really where all personal development started was thousands of years ago with dudes in fucking sandals and a robe. Epictetus in, in stoicism said, he who blames others has a long way to go on his journey. He who blames himself is halfway there. He who blames no one has arrived. And this really just embodies the whole true essence of of, of feedback and accountability. There's not blaming. When you're giving someone feedback, you're not blaming them. You're not putting them down. You're not telling them they're a horrible person. When you're asking for feedback, you're not going into this like self-loathing and feeling like shit, feeling bad about yourself. Like it's all with the purpose of making things better. And again, it starts with yourself. You need to give yourself fucking feedback on a regular basis. How often are you giving yourself feedback? Like I will sit here in this journal right here every single day and I will write down and reflect in the beginning of the day and the end of the day, giving myself ratings, giving myself feedback. How did I do with certain things? What did I fuck up on? What could I have done better? What could have been improved upon? Giving myself daily feedback, an AAR, an after action review, a debrief of the day. And I have Clients do this every single day. My one-on-one coaching clients, I have them report in AAR to me every single day through email so I could have a, a, a touch on the pulse of how their day is going, how their mindset is that day, how the business is going, how their fitness is going, how their personal discipline and development is going. That is feedback. You need to start with self-feedback. Hold, you can't hold other people accountable until you're able to hold your fucking self accountable. Then you could ask other people to also assist in holding you accountable. Now you have yourself and others holding you accountable. They have themselves and hopefully you holding them accountable. It's like a nonstop circle, a never ending circle. That's how you constantly build momentum and get better. Without feedback, if you're not regularly asking for feedback and receiving feedback, if you're not regularly giving feedback, you are a poor communicator, you're a poor leader, you're a poor fucking spouse, you're a poor entrepreneur, boss, manager, whatever you want to call it. If you're not doing this, you are a poor leader and a poor man and a weak man. You're That means you're just letting shit slide. You're being Mr. Fucking Nice Guy. You're just being passive aggressive and approval seeking because you don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to stir the pot. So you don't, and we're not talking about gossiping. That's a different type of stirring the pot. Little bitches, nothing worse than a grown man that fucking just gossips and stirs a pot just because they're trying to either cover their ass or detract or deflect because they don't want feedback on themselves. That's a different thing we're talking about. But when you're afraid to go give feedback because you don't want to stir the pot, sometimes motherfucking pots need to be stirred. When it's with the right intention, when you're having those tough conversations with the right intention, and we're going to go into that right now, those tough conversations during the project, which is a crazy four day hellacious event of just violence and torture and fun and growth and development 
and physical, mental, and emotional hardships, breakdowns to breakthroughs. One of the things I've noticed is the hardest part for these men during the project is when we have them rate each other. Let's say there's 10 individuals left out of the 25 that started because the other 15 motherfuckers quit and rang the bell. So there's 10 motherfuckers left. The hardest part, we have them rate themselves. All right, who's your first, who's your number one and who's your number 10? And someone, a lot of times they won't even give a name. They're too afraid to even give a fucking name because they, they don't know if they think it's a test or they don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Like if I'm 10, let me know I'm 10, motherfucker, because I need to know what I need to do to get out of this 10 spot. And can you fucking help me? And don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be a, a little bitch afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to offer the help to that 10 spot person. But the, the hardest part, when, let's say they finally grow the set of balls to actually say who they think is number one and number 10. And then they say who's number 10, ranked, that means the last person, like that person barely should even be there anymore, probably should go home. And they say who it is, you say, well, why is that? And they're all in line facing you, in line facing the instructors. And they'll look down at the ground and they'll say, well, it's because of, you know, this and that. And they'll start mumbling, you can't even fucking hear them. I'm like, first of all, don't tell the ground. So they'll look up and they'll start telling me the instructor. I'm like, no, motherfucker, don't tell me. Go over to number 10 and tell him why he's number 10. What has he done to be number 10 in your eyes? And they'll go over there and they will be like far away. They're afraid to get nose to nose and toes to toes with another motherfucking man because they haven't, they can't deal with that uncomfortableness because they're weak fucking men. And they don't know how to give that feedback. And when they do, they're looking looking down at the ground and talking under their breath. I'm like, no, look him in the eyes, speak clear and concise, and give him the feedback. And it'll be something like, oh, you're not putting out hard enough. Or you didn't do that good on the last evolution. Or you ran slow when we ran the mile. Like, that's, is that really feedback? Is that why someone's number 10? Is that the real reason? Like, they don't even know how to get, they don't know how to give it to another man. They don't even want to give it. They're afraid to give it. Then when they do give it, it's weak, pathetic, and meaningless. That's not helping that individual climb out of that 10 spot. Like if you're going to tell me I'm number 10, you better fucking tell me why. And if it's something you have personal, then we could have words about that. But why am I number 10? Like, let me know so I can unfuck myself. If you just tell me some bullshit stuff because you're afraid of, of rocking the boat or whatever else, or whatever you want to call it, nut the fuck up and tell me why I'm number 10. Realizing that... This is, you cannot avoid these tough conversations. You have to attack these conversations straight on and as soon as possible. Like you have to to go after, you can't let it wait because you're going to begin, start building up that resentment. And at the beginning of these tough conversations, some and we're not talking about just this this instance in the in the project of rating someone, just any tough conversation with your employees, with your your business partners, with your spouse, with your kids, whatever it is, you might have to start off acknowledging, you know what, this is gonna be a tough conversation, but it's needed and it's important. And I think we have the common goal is to come to a resolution, to come to an outcome that's favorable to both of us. Be clear and concise about the topic or the purpose or the reason for this tough conversation. And allow them to not make excuses, but maybe have some interaction going both ways. It's not just like this, this, A, B, and C, and that's it. Shut the fuck up, and that's it. There needs to be some two-way interaction there. Like They, they need to understand that it's a, a safe space that they could sit and have these fucking conversation and give the feedback. Know when to shut up. Know when to speak up. Know when to talk. Know when to fucking listen. When someone is giving you feedback, not just thinking of a, a comeback, or some bullshit body language or weird and fidgeting and looking at the ground and mumbling under your breath. Because if you're not focused, not paying attention, not actually listening, you're going to miss shit. Like you're going to miss shit. You're just thinking about how you're going to prove them wrong or what your comeback going to be or whatever else. You need to give feedback. Let them understand your point of view. No beating around the bush. No talking down. Just straightforward like a motherfucking man. That's the way it should be. And the purpose should be to create progress towards a resolution, towards personal development of that person, of yourself, of the relationship that you have. This is the point of tough conversations. The problem is most people, when they do finally get the balls to have a tough conversation, it's with devious intentions just because they want to put someone down or they want to trash someone to, to, to deflect the attention off themselves so they can keep doing their stupid, slimy, shady bullshit that they're doing. Like they're doing it for the wrong reasons. That's a whole different story. But then after these tough conversations, there needs to be 
all right, where, what's the follow-up going to be after this? When are we going to check in on this? When are we going to have a scheduled follow-up meeting on this? And this is not an uh, abrasive or argumentative or a little bitch fest. Like save the bitch fest for the little bitches. Little bitches, little snitches, little fucking snakes. This is, we're talking about real feedback between grown fucking men, not little bitches. And it's an agreement between two adults. All right, whatever, whatever's going, we're going to have reminders that we're not going to take anything personal here. We're going to put it out there to say what needs to be said, and but with the purpose of strengthening this relationship, strengthening this, this business, strengthening this family, whatever it is. And it's something you need to get this weight off your shoulders. Think about that. And if you're not doing it like this, straightforward like this, you are doing a disservice to your fucking people. You're doing a disservice to yourself, your business, your family. I heard uh, someone told me a story once. They had a, a client or a friend. I don't remember who, exactly who it was, but they were saying that they, uh, they they knew these two people, these two individuals, and these two guys saw each other and then didn't see each other again for like six months. And the one guy says to the other guy, he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm glad glad to see you. Glad to see you. You're, you're looking a lot better." He's like, "What do you mean I'm looking a lot better?" He's like, "Well, when I saw you six months ago, you looked like shit." You looked unhealthy, out of shape, depressed, like you was like like suicidal. Just looked off. Be like motherfucker, and you waited six months to see the, to see me again to tell me about this. Like if you you saw that I was that, that he was looking like that six months ago, fucking say something, reach out, give him some feedback. Like shit, imagine he was suicidal and you thought this and noticed, it, and he goes and fucking wax himself. And you saw this and noticed this. Or even if he's just getting fat and sloppy and out of shape. Or he's just being a dick to his family. And you notice it and don't say anything. That's on you just as much as him. That is your duty and obligation as a fucking man. If you're a friend or a business partner or whatever. That is your duty and obligation to to nut up and speak up. Sometimes you got to nut up and shut up. Sometimes you got to nut up and speak up. Know when the fuck to speak up and know when the fuck to shut up. And... This is this is needed in all areas. Like this is a, a, an exercise, a drill we do when I when I visit companies and work with their teams. And actually, we could even probably do this with our family coming up. And just think about this right now. Like this would work perfect in a family setting, in a team setting, in an office. Now, of course, this has to be with a team that already has trust and a strong relationship with each other. But it's called I call it the the feedback satellite circle. And we'll get into it in a second. But first, Mar- Marcus Aurelius says. Objective judgment now at this very moment, unselfish action now at this very moment, willing acceptance now at this very moment of all external events. That is all you need. Objective judgment, unselfish action, willing acceptance at this very moment is all you need. It's basically saying act with objectivity in order to accept the feedback and remain accountable. Not be a little bitch. Not get your little feelings hurt like a little fucking man child. Being able to deal with this feedback. This is why we only do this with groups that have a strong relationship. Teams that have a strong relationship. And they have to develop that relationship to in companies, in businesses, in families. It's all about developing relationships. Getting to know your people. The knowledge of your people. Make sure they have everything they need, the time, the supplies, the equipment, whatever, the proper training. And create a, a process and a schedule for tracking their, their progress and giving them feedback on it and keeping that communication open. Because again, if you're not giving this feedback, you are a poor fucking communicator with your team, with your family. It, it needs to be that this team, this feedback circle, this satellite circle. It's basically confronting one another, confronting each other on a team or in a family, confronting on behaviors, not necessarily measurables or KPIs or whatever. You could do that too, but more on the behaviors. Behavior is usually the, what comes first for creating good and bad results and good and bad numbers. It all starts with your behaviors, your habits, your disciplines. Hold each other to higher fucking standards of performance and how you're acting, how you're showing up and give feedback on that shit. And the, the way it goes is, all right, so I'm, let's say I'm the leader of the team or leader of the family. I'm literally going to stand up. I'm going to go first. Each person in that team, and it's better in a smaller group. I've done this with large groups, and it was a, a freaking nightmare. So if it's a large group, we'd break them up into smaller groups with eight people max in a group maybe, maybe 10 max, but really eight's probably the, the sweet spot, eight or less 
in a group and, and I'm standing up as the leader. And each person in that group in the team or the family or the, or the business partners, whatever you want to call it, will literally go around the room and you'll give them a couple of minutes. You'll have a couple of minutes first to, to write this out about each person in your group. So I see I'm in it with eight people. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to write down one thing that each of those team members or family members does that makes the team or the family better. The single biggest area of strength that they have that impacts our group, our team, our family. Not their technical skills or whatever. That's the price of admission. You're expecting that. Not their the basic skills or whatever. But the way they behave, the way that they act, their 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 personality, whatever you want to call it, that brings the, brings the team together and makes the team or the family stronger. So I'm going to write that down. So I'm in a group of eight people. I'm going to have like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever amount of time I need. For each individual, I'm going to write down their name and that, that biggest strength, that biggest uh, strength that they bring to the team and impacts team. Then I'm going to go around and look at each of them and I'm going to write down the one aspect of each of those, those individuals in that group that sometimes hurts the team. That maybe they need some tough love on. They need to hear about that maybe no one's fucking telling about. The shit that they maybe don't want to hear. The first thing is what they want to hear. The second thing is what they fucking need to hear. And sometimes the first thing they need to hear also because they're not getting that validation or approval or whatever or recognition enough. But you're basically given the one good thing and one bad thing to make it simplified. Make it fucking simple. And then I'm going to stand up. We're going to go around the room and each of those eight people is going to go around and tell me that one strong thing that they appreciate. And that one of those, that one positive characteristic or strength. And then I'm going to have one, one or two sentences to, to kind of a reaction to all those strengths that they reported. And then we're going to go, they're going to go around the, the, the team again for those individuals again. And they're going to report on that one characteristic that me as a leader need to improve on. The thing I need some feedback on. The thing I fucking need to hear that maybe people are too afraid to tell me. Like there's a hair going on the fucking outside of my nose. And then I'll have one or two sentences, literally 10 seconds to have a a brief reaction to this negative feedback, if you want to call it. So really, it's basically one positive thing, one negative thing. And then after I'm done, I stood up. They went around the room. They said the good. They went around. They said the bad. And I sit down and the next person stands up. We go around the room good, go around the room bad. You wouldn't believe how much growth, how much development, how much closer a team can get like this, but you really have to already have a a pretty strong team to be able to do this or a pretty strong relationship because otherwise it will be ugly. There's times I've showed up to companies where even after only a one day event and we scratched that and didn't even do that, they didn't know we're supposed to do it because I just know that it was going to be a fucking disaster. They weren't ready for it. They didn't have enough cohesive unit together to do it. So you need to be able to receive this feedback without getting your butt hurt. There's also that saying you've heard before, I'm sure, and it's it's been a, so many different people have been said to have said it, but we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. And this is basically just saying the importance of learning and improving through your listening to this feedback and shutting the fuck up, stop making excuses, stop giving all the reasons why and all the bullshit, no fucking excuses. Don't, don't seek for everything to happen as you wish that it would but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will. Then your life will flow well. That's also Epictetus. And that's basically just the adjustment to all feedback that makes you accountable and makes you able to progress forward. Not only wanting to hear what you want to hear, also hear what you fucking need to hear. Not just wishing everything's going to go your way. You need to also be able to deal with the shit that's not going to go your way and deal with it and not get all upset about it and take shit personal. That's how your life's going to flow well. That's how you're always going to be fucking centered and cut those peaks and valleys. And we have we have family meetings each week and a lot of times it goes into feedback in those meetings. And we probably need to add a feed. We don't even have a feedback section in the meetings. I'm writing it down right now as we go. We don't even have a feedback section in the family meetings, but we need a feedback. We need to add this satellite circle every, pretty much every single week in the, in the family meetings. We, we naturally give feedback throughout the meeting when we're going over goals or struggles or, or topics that have come up, but we're actually going to add in a feedback section as I'm writing it down as we go. See, as you're always learning, constantly giving, look, I'm getting feedback for myself. How can I make things even better? Or Tyson runs these, these, these workouts for homeschooled kids and he, he goes online with Zoom and does this training. If you want some information about that, just send me a message. I'll get you hooked up for your kids and you could join them and do it online. Zoom, it's a whole 
online community and platform that's built out for kids and fitness and kids' nutrition and mindset. But after each workout, we meet. And he's asking, I know I did this and this. I felt this and this was off. What could have been better? What did I do good? What could have been better? And we're giving feedback, like a, a live right away after action review of exactly what how it went. How could he get better? And it's not like, all right, here's A, B, and C. You did awesome. And then D, E, and F, we can probably improve on. Now, that D, E, and F is not to beat you and bash you down. It's so that you can get better, get even better the next time. That's what it's about. Like, listen to feedback, absorb the feedback, and then fucking act on the feedback you receive, or else what was the point? You get this feedback in, and you're like, oh, uh, and do nothing about it. And and we all get feedback sometimes from sources that are not respectable sources, maybe that you don't even, like, I'll get feedback from some people. It's like, all right, I'll even, I'll try, no matter where the source is, to try and get one bit of something out of it to make myself even better, but sometimes you have to consider the source. And no matter how that, feedback is is delivered, it's out of your control. You can't do shit about it. So don't take it fucking personal. But you can control how you react to the feedback, good or bad, from a good source or a bad source. A lot of times it might just be a hater trying to drag you down. That's why I said sometimes it comes in for the wrong reasons. And after time, you get some experience, some knowledge, and some wisdom to know the fucking difference and know whose feedback you respect and maybe whose you don't. I'm not going to take advice on how to lose weight from a fat motherfucker. I'll tell you that. Or how to build muscle from a little skinny motherfucker. Like that feedback is not going to, like if, what, I'm gonna, if I'm going to look like you, no, I don't want your feedback. No, I'm not going to take your advice. No, I'm not going to take action on your advice. But you need to go into these ideas of these feedback from giving and transmitting and receiving a feedback with an open mind, open-minded, an open-minded freaking listener. And before we respond, take the time to metabolize the feedback that's coming in and allow yourself to not get emotional and all fucking hurt about it, but dig through it, dig through it and not have some kind of negative reaction. And sometimes the shit hurts. Sometimes shit stings like, holy shit, that was a fucking zinger. But you need to consider the feedback provider's motives and their intent Do you believe that they genuinely wanted to help you level up? Do you even fucking trust them? If not, then fuck it. You just disregard that bullshit. And even then, you might be able to pull pull maybe something out of it from from the feedback they give you. But after, if you're realizing, all right, this is someone I respect, I'm going to accept this feedback. With that in mind, you need to think about, all right, how am I going to move forward? How am I going to make changes, if any? How am I going to take action on this so I'm not just staying the same? Otherwise, what was the point of this difficult fucking conversation? And then finally, regularly ask the people that you respect, that you respect the feedback, what they think of your performance or what they, how they think you did or how, how was the episode or how was this session, whatever it is, get, ask for the people, actively ask for it, be fucking hungry for this feedback. And then when you're giving it, give real valuable feedback and be willing to accept feedback up and down the chain of command, no matter what. Ask yourself, do you give enough feedback? to your team, your peers, your boss, the ones above you, the people you lead below you, up and down the chain of command, laterally, horizontally, in your company, in your business, in your in your, your sports team, in your family? Do you give enough feedback? And then do you ask for enough feedback? Do you request and are you hunger and do you solicit this feedback? Listen, on this show This is my job to be direct with you and straightforward and candid and not waste your fucking time. And when you come on here, you're going to get direct, straightforward fucking feedback. And if you take it personal, too fucking bad. In the Marine Corps, we call that truth to power. You can go to anyone of any rank and tell them the truth, of course, in a respectful way. But truth to power, we called it. That's holding other motherfuckers accountable. And that has to be happening with a built relationship, with trust. Before you can give someone feedback, you've already got to build that relationship. So, so much goes into this below the surface. Of course, you can't walk up and give feedback to anyone to a stranger. That's why you have to think about the source. But the purpose is to build a stronger relationship. So I want to ask you to kind of wrap this up. When is the last time you gave someone real and effective feedback? I'm talking about real, not just, oh, you're not putting out hard enough or you didn't run that last lap fast enough. I'm talking about real feedback that's going to make them better, that you actually gave a fuck about to make them better because you want to improve that relationship. You wanted to help that person out, selflessly giving them feedback to make them better, to make the team better, the family better, the business better. And then when's the last time you actually received real 
and effective feedback from someone, like actually received it. And on top of that, when's the last time you fucking asked for real feedback? Think about those three questions. And if not, go do all three of those this fucking week. Go and make it happen. Go and first get your own shit together to, to, to have your own self conquered so that you can give and receive feedback. You earn the right to do it. Then go and ask for feedback. Then receive feedback. And that will earn you the right to then give real and effective and productive feedback to other people. Stop being a little bitch. Stop being afraid of ruffling feathers. Do the shit that needs to be done. This is what grown men do is give feedback to each other, make each other better. This is what men do with their families is give feedback, but also ask for feedback, not just telling everyone what's wrong with them. What's wrong with me, motherfucker? Let me know. Tell me about the nose, that that nose hair I have growing outside of my nose. Again, who the fuck has hair growing outside of the nose? Apparently I do. But let me know when you see a hair on the outside of my nose. If you see me out there in the streets, you see me at an event, tell me if there's a motherfucking hair growing outside of my nose or if I have a caterpillar, caterpillar curled up devil horn for an eyebrow. Let me know. I'm a hairy motherfucker. I don't recognize it sometimes. If this has helped you at all, make sure you share and like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you go out and solicit feedback for yourself. Ask for it. Be hungry for it. And then give it with the intention of helping other people out and building your freaking personal relationships. Let me know how it goes. I want to hear about the feedback you've given and received in the last week. Put it in the comments down below. And we will see you next time on the Steve Eckert Show podcast. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.